Erebor. The last great dwarven mansion to remain in the west of Middle-earth is ruled by King Dane Ironfoot. The kingdom under the mountain, like with the rest of the dwarven mansions we will have in Realms in Exile, consists of many underground holdings. In Erebor's case, there will be seven underground counties, some of which will be held by familiar faces that you can choose to play. King Dane controls more domains than the Erebor itself, however. His son, Nain, holds stewardship over the Iron Hills, extending their protection to the long isolated stiff beards of the eastern edge of the Iron Hills. Long ago they left their homeland, due to a combination of the evils of the north pressing too close and petty squabbles with a descendant of the royal family. Meanwhile, the lowlands of the Iron River are occupied by feuding siblings of Longbeard descent under the watchful gaze of a war mansion of Blacklock Dwarves from the Utter South. Led by the Axe that walks, they are ever hungry for their next chance to strike at Sauron and his minions. The Grey Mountain Narrows rejoice as they are finally united with the rest of their de jure mountain range. The Grey Mountains and the Withered Heath will be available for players of both Goblin and Dwarf to explore and colonize for their very own. Various tribes of Goblins and their Uruk overlords range across the mountains, and the isolated and hidden Hold of Nordenbad remains in isolation, making sure that even their own King Dane, who they recognize, does not know of their existence. Still recovering from the wars of orcs and dwarves, the Misty Mountains have many different goblin tribes and Uruk masters with various cults and tribal identities, from the Lake Stalkers of the Sunken Spire to the Hall Roamers of Moria, and even in the very depths of Moria at the uttermost foundations of stone beyond light and knowledge wander the Deep Walkers, among whose kind are whispered rumors of unknowable terrors unseen by even the most wise. The lost realm of Nurin Kishdin rests among the old Donna Spine. Long since abandoned by its Iron Fist founders, the hold rests as a stark reminder of the hubris of their kind, and its gates await, now almost completely void of inhabitants, for any would-be adventurers seeking to take the place for their own. Now, I imagine you all are rather excited to play Balin as he uh, retakes Moria and faces all the various goblin tribes within the mines. Uh, however, I realize I may have neglected to mention something. Yes, indeed. The scope for version 4.0 of Realms has expanded far beyond what we let on. In fact, we have already mapped all of Eriador, and much work has been done far more than I'd like to admit as a dwarf fan myself, on the races and folks of Eriador itself beyond the dwarves. However, this does in fact mean that we shall have the broad beams and firebeards in addition to the long beards, so I can hardly complain now, can I? With the inclusion of Eriador in this update, it will give those who are more eagerly anticipating Aragorn or Círdan being landed at the start than playing dwarves something to do. Even those who are wanting to bring the second breakfast to the world will have options in this update, as Councilmaster Barleyman of Bree, as well as Ferumbras the Thane of the Shire, will be playable despite their owning of cities. But I warn you, please do not attack Ranger Captain Halberchat. Your army of dudes with lamps will not stand a chance against an army of anime protagonists. I thank you all so much for watching till the end. Please stay tuned on the Realms in Exile Discord, or check by my YouTube channel for more videos like this and updates on the mod, as development continues. In future, I will make videos to dive deeper into the specifics of the new regions and the factions at play in them. Thank you once again for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.